You're listening to the Crew Book Club podcast, the show that challenged you to change your mindset through hearing about dope books. Thanks for hanging with the crew to get advice, ask questions, and gain knowledge with me, your host, Sade Hill. What up, crew? What's good? Welcome to another episode of the Crew Book Club podcast. It is on and popping on this beautiful Monday morning. Ow. You're tuning in and we just had a bomb behind time at the meet and greet. I'm recording this podcast episode the Wednesday before today and I'm just speaking into existence right now that we're having a bomb behind time this weekend because I know we are because let me tell you something if I'm in a room it's gonna be good (laughs) I ain't trying to toot my own horn I just know I'm a person if the energy is off in the room I can't either I'm gonna exit and be in the room and change the energy especially if I have to be there Oh, the energy getting shifts and it might make some of y'all uncomfortable, but I can care uh, less Not that I don't care about you in particular. I'm just not going to I'm not going to bring down my happiness and my incitement because you having a pooty party. OK, <laughs> I do not. And I let me tell you something. I do not entertain pity parties. OK, now you might you might have an excuse for something or complain every. But if you're not doing something officially about it to change it, it ain't. So long, I can take listening, listening to it. Either you're going to accept what it is, keep it moving, or do something about it. And there are some things that you might have to go back and forth about in life. I completely understand. At the same time, just do understand that it's only so many times you can say or say something and don't put any action behind it. All right? So you want to talk about it, be about it. All right, amen. And I'm talking to myself as well. I ain't just talking to you. I, I'm literally looking at a camera talking to myself while talking to you. That That's just what it is. All right. So and for my podcasters that it was specifically for my YouTube watchers because I do upload videos on YouTube as well. So if you want to see what your girl looking like, you want to look at my facial expressions. I don't care. Laugh at me or whatnot. Go ahead. Check out our YouTube channel, The Crew Book Club. And yeah, check us out there. Follow and subscribe. All that juicy, juicy and while I'm at it, I might as well just tell you, it's at the Crew Book Club on fan base, TikTok, Instagram, uh, Facebook. We are launching, I launched the private group. So that's a whole nother vibe as well. We're going to start getting into that and having our own little private crew conversations. Okay, everybody can't be in our business crew. So the page is private. So come and check that out too on Facebook. All right. And somebody was like, you know, I do understand Everybody not into Facebook. That's why I'm on TikTok. That's why I'm on Instagram. The reason why there's a Facebook group is because it's easy to plan events, drop links, documents that I want to share with you guys. It's just easier to form those type of aspects for our group on our Facebook page. But if you're not into Facebook, I always try to share at least the links and the stories on IG and on the YouTube episodes, I try to drop the links in the bio, okay? I know that's a lot right now. Listen to it right here on the pod, but I just want to let you know where we at, sis. All right, so, ooh, did I ask y'all how y'all feeling? I said, I am so sorry. I am so rude. How are you guys feeling today? I hope you're feeling absolutely amazing, okay? And if you're not, that is okay. Finish listening to this podcast and hopefully it pumps some blood in your system and you can pivot your mindset and get to the rest of the day all right all right so let's get into it with no further ado because i don't talk your head off already what <laughs> yes I lo- i'm a talker i love to talk that's why i started a podcast lord jesus use the gift all right who on chat me boo guy is he is always checking us because we deserve a good check because it keeps us wood in check <laughs> Okay, this check comes from Joshua chapter seven, verse 12. And this particular part of the Bible is the fall of Jericho. And I'm not going to go into the depths of it, but it's basically this city that was taken over that was won. And now it's coming to a fall because God told these people not to do something. They did it anyway. And it's all coming crashing down. 
Okay, so that's why it's called the fall of Jericho. And this particular scripture, chapter 7, verse 12, it says, This is why the Israelites cannot stand against their enemies. They turn their backs and run because they have been made liable to destruction. I will not be with you anymore unless you destroy whatever among you is devoted to destruction. Let me tell y'all. Oh, it just hit me again. I would not be with you anymore unless. God always gives us an unless. There's always a way out of this situation for you to change it around. So, okay, so there's always an opportunity to get it right. He always leaves the orders open to get it right. And a lot of times our shame and guilt tends to take over and we don't want to face it. But God is waiting for you. So that's just something I wanted to throw out that just came to me right now in this moment. All right. And then I put in my notes here. I said, what is something or someone God has asked you to leave behind that is destroying you? Ooh, ooh, destruction. There's people, places and things that will lead you to destruction. And I need you to check it at the door. All right. You are going to keep having the same battles if you do not let it or them go. You know, stop getting in your own way. Get into the God way. Oh, yes. He is waiting on you, sis. He ain't waiting on nobody else. He waiting on you. Okay. You know, I told God, listen, you don't have to wait on me no more. <laughs> I'm at the bus stop early waiting for the Jesus bus to come up because I do not want to miss the opportunity to ride the bus with Jesus. Okay. I don't want to be running. Wait, wait, wait for me. Wait for me, Jesus. No, no, no. I want to be ready and willing to accept what I need to let go. So I won't be liable of any more destruction in my life. Okay. I ain't got time. All right. <laughs> I value what God needs me to do too much to waste any time to allow anything or someone to destroy what God has for me. So I need you need to and I need to continue to leave behind the stuff that God wants us to leave behind, because if we don't leave behind those things, you're wondering why you're still facing the same battles and why you feel like your enemies keep winning because God is waiting on you and you getting in your own way, not allowing him to do what he needs to do. Oh, yes, which we're going to get, which is, oh my gosh, this actually links into chapter nine that we're going to cover in bamboos about Jesus. Let God guide. All right. You try to do your own plan, but instead of you need to let God guide. And then also when it comes to being at the place where you need to be so God can get, get, get with you and get it together. We have to get out our own way and let God lead and be ready for him. He needs to see us that we're ready. It's always so much he can do. He can bring you to him, but you got to allow him to let him be him. Oh, I hope you caught that. <laughs> All right. And let me tell you something. A lot of y'all be waiting, talking about, oh, January 1st, 2023, baby. I can't wait till this year over. Honey, you don't have to wait for that year. Okay. No, you don't have to wait. Your new season can start right now if you get out the way. And I'm going to put it in the words of the great ludicrous. Move. Get out the way, get out the way, get out the way. <laughs> All right. So that was who going to check me, boo. God is. He is always checking us. All right. So let God check you, boo. <laughs> All right. You already know loving the crew. The crew love is definitely on 10 for the meet and greet that 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 happened. Now, I, I still need y'all to leave a review. Drop, a, drop your girl five stars in the Apple app. Of the Apple Podcast app, but as well as on Spotify. And if you're on Apple, please, please, please leave a written review. It can be a short, sweet sentence. Just leaving a review helps me grow in the podcast space. And like I say in the outro, don't come on here, soak all this goodness up and not share it. This is the crew. You know what I'm saying? You want the right people in your crew, but you also don't want to be the only one in your crew elevated. I don't want to leave my friends behind, but if I have to, I will. But at least I'm going to give them the tools and information to not be left behind. It's like I did my part. I'm giving you the information. So if you guys can share, review um, the podcast, tell a friend, all that good stuff, I, I would appreciate it and you would appreciate it. We want our tribe to grow the strength and we're stronger together. Okay. All right, so let's get into chapter 9 and chapter 10. Chapter 9 is going to be 
let God guide, okay? And chapter 10, I swear to God, <laughs> we don't all been there. I swear to God, I won't do it again, God, if you just this one time. <laughs> all right, chapter 9 and Bamboozled by Jesus. I absolutely love this book. I said that about every book, but I definitely be reading the books, y'all. I be deep diving. And by the time I give it to you, this is my second time reading it. Mm -hmm. It'd be good. All right. So listen, when she gets into it, let God, God, I was like, that's it. That's all I need to do. You don't have to tell me twice. <laughs> it's how she says it on the second sentence, literally in the chapter. Like this don't make no kind of sense crazy. That's how he be moving. <laughs> you ever be arguing with God and debating with him? Oh, child, I used to all the time. I used to like, well, God, I don't want to do that because this don't make no sense. Now I'd be like, uh-huh, okay, God. Oh, oh, that's what you want? Oh, we good. You ain't got to worry about asking me twice. <laughs> I don't need him to ask me twice. But yes, I used to, oh, I used to argue God up and down. I used to why, 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 why him up and down, okay? And then it finally hit me like, I'm not going to go back and forth with you, sir. You know exactly what needs to be done, and I'm going to just, just follow, okay? It's a waste of time and energy to go back and forth with him, you know? And I feel he said the same thing to her, on, like he said to her on page 105. It says, he used my words against me. He said, okay, the Holy Spirit. Okay, so if it's not enough anyway, why don't you trust me with the little you do have? If you keep it, you'll still be short. But if you give it, there's no telling what I can do. Girl, it goes a lot longer when God has it in, in his hand because God is not a man of fear. He's not. He's the best planner we can have. He looks out for us best. He's the best accountant, the best lawyer, the best financial advisor, the best uh, therapist, the, all of that. He's all of that. So why leave it in your hand? You might as well put it in his hand. And this is not just about your problems and things of that nature. We talking about the dollar bill. You see, I'm wearing green today. Um, we, we talk about money. How much do you trust God with your money? And, you know, I struggle before I even got on here and I was talking, oh, I'm going to talk about tithing and this. And she talks about, this is what she's talking about in the book. But for me to talk about, it's like I never push tithing on anybody. I'm just telling you what I experienced with tithing and it was the best thing. And it, and I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm going to just, just give you the facts. It's coming from Yvonne and it's coming from me. <laughs> okay. Listen, this is the thing on page 105. It says God's lifelines don't often look like anything we want to grab a hold of. Inconvenient, but not unreasonable is how Jesus reels you into getting baboozled. Okay. If we go, you know, God will wait till you have nothing else to show. You know what I'm saying? Just as he, she described on page 106 and 107, he, girl, he will wait till you have nothing. <laughs> I don't, I don't been there too. All right. She says, we've been at the point when all we were trying to do was hold on to our next breath to keep from breaking down. And then all of a sudden, yes, God, God throws us for a loop. Anything we think, dream, ask for, or imagine, God is God. Enough to do exceedingly, abundantly, and above. That is so good. And some context to that is she ended up having a friend that right at the nick of time needed to rent a room. So Yvonne rented her one bedroom out to her to cover rent to sleep on a couch because she had tithe the money. And this is the thing. Like, God will send somebody just in the nick of time, and that's how... He can, he can show up for you by trusting him in that way. And a lot of times we struggle with trusting him with our finances, but that's the biggest way. And I, if I'm not mistaken, that's the only way in the Bible that you can really test God. Okay. You want to, you want to test God. Oh, honey, that is a way to test, to test him. And it's also a way for you to show that you trust him with everything. All right. A little backstory as well on page 108. She says, my rent check bounced like big booties in a strip club. I've given God a whole entire week to supernaturally transfer funds into my account. And this is how he repaid me. He could not create earth in six days, but somehow getting me rent in seven was too much like work. And I like how she referenced Pastor Mike. She says, um, Pastor Mike will often say, do God's blessing have you 
or do you have them? If you've got you, then more likely you're unwilling to surrender them like I was. If you have them, then like Abraham, Abraham, you can still treat it God like a genie. And oh, sorry. Uh, if you have them, then like Abraham, you can sacrifice them at will. My reaction to the rent debacle revealed that I can that I still treated God like a genie in a bottle. I was basically saying, I'll give, but hurry up and give it back before I get an overdraft fee. I couldn't see it at the time, but it was more, I was more afraid of what my landlord could do than what I was resolved to let God, God up the situation. That's why he let the check bounce. He needed me to know that I couldn't always dictate how he'd show up, but I'd be best certain that he would show up. So true. And to go back to that, it's like how many of y'all would rent your place out to someone to not sleep in your bedroom? Are you really up for that sacrifice? You know, a lot of uh, we can be so bougie sometimes and so entitled. It's like, I ain't doing that. Like, uh-uh, this is my house. I'm going to sleep in my bedroom. I rent the couch out to you. But no, <laughs> like she needed top dollar. So she did what she had to do. And I think you have to understand it might look like you're going backwards, but this was a move to move forward. She did what she had to do to keep in a place that she wanted to be in. It was still her place. She leveraged. She leveraged what she had to get to where she needed to go. And listen here. It also reads, God never wastes a lesson. You might not like the class, but he's sure to pass the test. When you let God guide and fully surrender your frustration to his holy imagination, there's no telling what answers he can provide. He's in your tomorrow, today. So if he asks you to do something unpredicated and kind of sort of ridiculous, just rock with it. Because the thing is, y'all, it's temporary. He just want to see if you're willing to do it. (laughs) <laughs> that God has a very funny sense of humor and you just got to get with it or you're going to get lost. <laughs> All right. That was the just of chapter nine. And I just feel like, you know, I really be trying to break these little things down for y'all. But when you read the totality of the text, it will hit different. These are just the keynotes. Okay. Okay. I literally cry of joy reading her story and one because she's a black woman and seeing what she how she stood up for herself and then her relationship with Christ that's a that's a whole another thing and how she didn't uh she didn't she didn't allow the she didn't allow Hollywood to change her values and her morals And that's what I really appreciated about this because there's been times where when I used to model and stuff and I was asked to do new and I was just like, no, I'm not going to be ostracized and I have a higher power to uphold and nothing against people who do it. It's just God didn't put it in my spirit to do it. And if he ain't put it in my spirit to do it, Shada ain't doing it. Point blank period. All right. Okay. Let's get into chapter 10. I swear to God. (laughs) On page 111, it says, I'm sure you were raised not to swear to God. And you shouldn't because you don't have a cachet to back it up. But God does. And when he swears to himself on your behalf, that settles it. The good book says that God anointed us. He set his seal of ownership on us and put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit. Guaranteeing, whoo, that guarantee what is to come. Basically, God's put a down payment on our future and has given us the title deed to the kingdom. What his has become ours and what's ours and a life littered with surprises of things we didn't know to ask for, even one until they appear. I feel like Jesus is constantly... This great surprising Christmas. As a kid, I I didn't always know that I was getting under the tree. And there was times that I knew of things that I've asked for. But to go, to constantly get these gifts and miracles and love from Christ is just like the most amazing thing. And these things that I didn't even know I needed. Like this podcast, I didn't really know how much I needed it until I started doing it. And I felt like God gifted me this because I sacrificed doing things that he wanted me to do. Now he's genuinely giving me something that I absolutely love to do. Okay. On page 112, (laughs) a little context. 
To visually explain the worlds I was creating, I decided to shoot a concept trailer. On the last episode, we talked about her finishing a script called First Gen, where she needed to do what she was asked to do first before God catapulted her into her insecure role she wrote a series and this particular time she needed to shoot a concept trailer the problem was concept trailers cost money and need production teams neither of which she had but God swore to God back on sun sunset boulevard to bless me and to keep me from moving back home so it didn't surprise me when during a casual meeting with a few women from church I asked if anyone had connections to an independent production company and one of the ladies said that her boyfriend friend cousins elaine managed one listen she was like of course she did when there's a blessing with your name on it god's assigned the right people to compel to help you she agreed to waive her fee and take on a project at a rate discounted from 10 grand to seven I don't know if she even realized this, but it took her seven years to get what she needed to do. And then this lady reduced her price to seven because, you know, seven is the number of completion. And it's just wild to me seeing how that number showed up again for her. And this also goes back to that seed that she planted. And, and I'm pretty sure she's a continual tither. This is how it can show up. It might not always show up in monetary hand in your bank account, but it can show up in discounts like this. Okay. So when we, when we continue to read, let's listen to how much, what else came with that. She says, then one day my neighbor, Melissa saw me hustling to create more content for the show to lend her support. She gave $1,500 just let me tell y'all, people be watching. You worrying about people. You get, ooh, you might get offended because people watching you like, ooh, what's she doing? Da, da, da. But they could totally be inspired by that. But see, this is the difference. A person who is really inspired by you and is staring at you and curious about you, they will step up and do actionable things, whether it's telling you, sharing yourself on social media, not just watching. You know what I'm saying? These are tangible ways where you can really see if somebody really with you, they support you. And this is the thing. It don't always have to be with money. Like I said, it could be with time, sharing your posts, sharing information with other people about you, referring them out. You know, as a realtor, when people were for me I take that so with so much love and respect because they trusted me enough to give them my name to represent them you like that's a big deal but anywho she was blessed with fifteen hundred dollars okay the lady said she confessed that it was refreshing to see me working so hard trying to make things shape because it reminded her of the grind she had when she first moved to the city Tears that flowed from my eyes were hot and real. The fact that my faith in action caused someone to put money behind my dream when they didn't have to was beyond overwhelming. <laughs> That's exactly how I feel about the meet and greet. Y'all showed out. Her seed put us at a $2,250 mark. You know, still, y'all, this wasn't enough, all right? Remember, she needed... Well, you don't. Well, she said she needed an initial five thousand deposit before she even shot. After the lady took it from ten grand to seven, she needed five k to even get started. So she really only had three thousand two hundred and twenty five dollars towards the project. And it says here, I it was looking like I was gonna have to push production. Woohoo! This is another significant number around three a.m. Three, the Trinity. <laughs> three. Listen, listen. I want y'all to go look up with the number three. Okay, look it up, look it up. She says, at 3 a.m. while I was doing edits for a promo video, I got a message from a friend, Julius in Nigeria, asking about the first gen. And she said, I was tired and tempted not to engage. But instantly, I heard the Holy Spirit say, don't hold back. And this is why you got to be in a relationship with Christ. <laughs> Because he, that Holy Spirit going to speak and he going to tell you exactly what you need to do. That's that discernment coming through. All right. He asked about my ideal network for the show and how I would pivot if I didn't sell. If I could consider turning into a web series on, you know, on and on. And at one point I thought, am I being audited because bruh, <laughs> but I patiently answered him. And finally, after integration, he said, you can count on me for three. <laughs> Y'all I ain't talking about three dollars. I ain't talking about 300. 
And that's that number three again. This man deposited $3,000 into her bank account, which catapulted her to the finish line. Plus more, mind you. Let's look, 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 look. Before him, she had $3,225. Okay, let's do the math. He put another Three grand on top of that. Your girl came up with the sixty-two twenty-five. All right, that's literally she only had to come up with seven hundred and seventy-five dollars more. Okay, mind you, she only needed five for the deposit. So, oh, that's how Lord Jesus. But you see, she was putting in work. People saw her hustling. She was doing the work. She was showing God that you can trust me to do this. And that's what I'm saying. Like, y'all, it's not just going to come to you. He's just not going to drop it in your lap. He's going to drop little breadcrumbs, but you have to do the work. Okay. Woo. I swear to God, you got to do the work. <laughs> so, Yes. Listen here on page 115. She says, God is not interested in you staying small. Why show up to accept second place when first already has your name on it? After God swears to himself on your behalf, you should be unsettled by unsettling. Ooh, you should be so uncomfortable with settling when you know you got a guy like this. Okay. All right, so don't go out here and settle, y'all. I need y'all to get it together. <laughs> and listen here, I like this last sentence on chapter 10, I swear to God. Don't let you be the last one to know you're you. Oh, don't let nobody else tell you who you are. Okay? Oh, is that the title of the episode? Don't let nobody else tell you who you are. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm going I'm to play with it. I'm going to play with it. But I'm just saying, y'all, like, you the ish. Okay? Okay. I just want you. Do you hear me? I want you to say it with me. I am the ish. You can say the full word. I'm going to hold it down. We've been talking about Jesus too much. I'm going to check myself today. <laughs> but no, you the ish sis. We the ish sis. Okay? We going to be the ish together. <laughs> All right. So that was chapter 10. I swear to God. So, so good. I was actually working on chapter 10 outline this morning and it made me tear up and cry because that's kind of how I feel about this whole meet and greet thing. Like people are really showing up and showing out and the way God strategically put things in place for me to be able to put this on. It's just, I know it's God sent. This is all part of his plan and purpose. And I'm excited to share that with you. All right. You know, before we go into the challenge of the week, I have to let you guys know about our partnership, which is a sponsor of this episode, betterhelp.com slash crew love. Get 10% off your first month of therapy. I done told y'all countless times that I use BetterHelp and they, the therapist that I have is an absolutely amazing. I really appreciate her. I'm on pause right now. Um, but whenever I'm, whenever I'm like, okay, I need therapy. I, I'm the person that will go for like six weeks straight. Think I got it together and be back six weeks. <laughs> Cause it's, and I want to, I treat therapy like a, like an oil change. It's kind of like, you know, you get your oil change, you drive in your car, it's driving smooth. And then, you know, it starts to do that little, well, mine is getting old. My baby getting old, but it's starting to do this little shake, shake, shake when I need a little oil change. So now it's just like, okay, let me get this oil change. And then we get refreshed. That's how I feel about therapy. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I need it more than what I needed it before. And also for different things, because every new level, there's going to be something else. And you might need to rehash things out. You know what I'm saying? But anywho, check out betterhelp.com slash crew love. That's better H E L P dot com slash crew love. That link will be in the show notes as well. Okay. All right. So let's get into the challenge of the week. The challenge of the week this week is, and I, I literally, God told me to do this because I, I was teetering about this challenge of the week. It was inspired by the book and it's inspired by my real life. I want to challenge you to trust God in a way you may have never trusted him before. And it's tithing. And I don't know if you belong to a church or whether you watch a church on uh, on TV. But however you receive the word of God, 
And even if you never receive the word of God, I challenge you to be open to receiving the word of God, you know, um, from maybe a church that your friend invites you to. But I really want you to challenge yourself. And like Yvonne says on page 113 of the book, you know, God wouldn't fill me up to leave me on E. And let me tell y'all something. Like I said early in the episode, it doesn't always come back in monetary. It can come back in healing. It can come back in getting a vision from him. It can come back, you know, maybe you have a bad tire on your car and that thing just keep on trucking out, exploding because it's like he's protecting, he's protecting something. You know what I'm saying? Because he saw that you trusted him. I remember a time where I had a tire blow. And I was probably like oh, the week before, I'm gonna say a week and a half. I had some tithing that I needed to do and I did it. And the tithe, I was supposed to tie like $75. Literally a tire blew. And when I went to go get the same tire, it cost $75. I ain't even gonna lie to you. And I felt like that was a ha ha ha. I would have, I should, I would have rather given that money to my church than me holding it because it came through somewhere else. I still lost it. And this was a loss. This wasn't a trust. This was a loss. And I'm just telling you this, like you don't have to accept this challenge. I'm just telling you not just something that I heard. This is something that I know. This is something I have experienced. And I feel like because I'm such an obedient um, tither in our relationship that I want for nothing. I was, I'm taking a risk to do certain things financially. And I was like, okay, God, I don't know. He said, you ain't gonna have to change your lifestyle because I got you. As long as you're doing my work and you're doing what I ask you to do and I see that I can trust you, you good. So this week I am t- challenging you. It can be tithing, but trust God in a way you never trusted him before. Straight from the heart. All right. All right. Let's get into what would the crew do? <laughs> I got some cruel advice. Yes, someone um, emailed me. This is, I haven't had an email in a minute. I normally get them on like DMs and stuff. Okay, so the email said, I see you into God heavy. How do you trust him so much? I struggle with knowing God. Do you have any suggestions to help me? Girl, I'm assuming by your name, your girl. Oh, My biggest suggestion, and it's going to seem simple, it ain't nothing fancy. It's literally talking to him and reading your Bible, worshiping when you don't have to worship. I don't know. I I don't know how you intake Christ. I just know. I mean, I was raised in church and, you know, and all of those things. But we have enough resources to, to find him. And, you know, oh, this just came to me. Maybe... If you're struggling with something particular, maybe look up Bible verses or Bible verses or download the Bible app and and you can type in healing or faith or struggle. You can type in what you may be dealing with. And there's these Bible plans that can help target those particular things. Okay, and read it. And I'm not saying go in there. Don't go in reading the Bible or reading these scriptures like you're going to get this whole epiphany. Like God know your intentions. And when people say, oh, God know my heart. That ain't he know your heart, whether you're doing something with love or not. And I think diligently seeking him is the biggest way that you can get closer to God. I was watching a show yesterday. I don't know if y'all watched Center on Netflix. And the lady was like. I've been sitting in this church for six to nine years and I haven't heard a word from him. And it's just like, you may have not heard a word from him. It's because you're not open to hearing a word from him. Or if you're hearing a word, you're not sure it's him. And he's probably saying things that you don't want to hear. So I would just, I would suggest opening up your heart to him. And you're probably, what does that look like? Just naturally reading. And if nothing hits, read tomorrow. And if nothing hits, read tomorrow and then pray. It don't have to be anything philosophical. You know, go on YouTube, find a pastor. You know, my favorite pastors to listen to is Sarah Jake Roberts, T.D. Jakes. Um, my pastor, Tim Timberlake um, at Celebration Church. You, uh, Ferdick, Stephen Ferdick. Like, find a pastor. Research. 
people that you like, the things that I just listed, go check those out. If you like what you hear on the pod, go listen to those people or other people that inspire you. See what they're checking into. See what pastors and ministries they're doing. But you have to seek him diligently. And I'm telling you, when you seek, you will find and he will be waiting for you at the spot. (laughs) All right. So that was what would the crew do? Ask advice. You can easily DM on any of our social media platforms at the crew book club. I mean, fan base, uh, TikTok and Instagram, as well as you can drop them on YouTube in the comment section, or you can email the crew book club at gmail.com. Ask advice. And I got you. I got you. All right. Now let's end this episode off with the quote of the week. The quote of the week comes from page 116 out of Bamboozle by Jesus, Yvonne Orgy. And it says, whether you realize there's a blessing with your name on it (laughs) or not, doesn't stop it from existing. Other people see it even if you don't. And if you refuse to act on it, you'll forfeit it while they take advantage of it. All right, so go out there, be blessed, and just know there's a blessing with your name on it. Thanks for tuning in to the Crew Book Club podcast, and I will holler at y'all next week. Hey! Want to be a part of the crew? Hit that follow button so you'll never miss an episode. And while you're at it, I would appreciate you showing crew love by rating the show on iTunes and Spotify. Don't keep all this goodness to yourself. Share and tell a friend so your whole crew can be growing with you. Let me be the first to tell you, welcome to the crew.